be talking today in view of the fact that we just had a presidential election this week and it's uh, brought up a lot of emotions and feelings. Really the topic that we're going to be approaching is uh, how does a Course in Miracles student see uh, what's happened and what's, what's going on? How do we integrate this to ourselves? And really I think in a lot of ways the question is how do we learn how to take the higher road rather than getting uh, caught down on the, a lower road, which would be very, very easy to do. Uh, I was listening to the course on CD as I was coming into the city today, and <clears throat> it said that pro projection is a belief. And I thought that's, you know, how many times have we talk about projection makes perception? But then projection is a belief, and we will support whatever beliefs, that, and also the line that the, the ego is always looking for a reason to be angry, okay? So the, the ego is always looking for the opportunity to be on the attack. I mean, the, the ego, it feeds on attack. In fact, is if there's nothing to attack, what do you have? Peace of mind? <laughs> you know, just quietude. So I'm gonna start this, and some of the slides that I was gonna use are here. And some of them are not here, and I'll, but I have me. I'll, I'll share with you the ones that, that are here. And I thought what we'd do is I will start, and then maybe for ten minutes or so, whenever it seems appropriate, David, that you'd like to chime in, start chiming in, and usually also we kind of do a lecture and then discussion later. But if you want to chime in during this first part as well, we make it more of a discussion today than we have sometimes we have. Yeah, you want to be careful your head doesn't get up there in the... You're, you're good. You're good. All right. So, let's start off with... We've heard this quote several times from the Course, but let's emphasize it, right? <clears throat> this is an insane world. So it doesn't take very much study of history to see that this is an insane world. As... Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson says it's just one goddamn thing after the other. You know, and, and it is just one goddamn thing after the other because, <clears throat> again, the ego likes to find problems and projections and difficulties, and it's all about power. There's a lot about power. Oh, by the way, you have a copy of the latest issue of Miracles magazine there. And by the way, I'd like to recognize the fact that <clears throat> Brad over here is... Uh, responsible for this cover. That's a picture he took in uh, Central Park. And as always, right? One more, as, as I'm looking at people, I just want to mention the fact that sitting in the back row in the far right corner is Giselle Lasbro, who's a good friend and a Course of Miracles teacher here in the village for 30 years or more. And, but I haven't seen her in probably 25 years, so it's wonderful to have Giselle here today. Hi. Hi. Yes, good to see you, dear. Okay, back to insanity. Um, <clears throat> this is an insane world, and do not underestimate the extent of its insanity. There is no air of your perception that is not touched. And your dream is sacred to you. We hold on to the dream. And we, we actually try very much to keep the dream alive. There's nothing inside us that kind of wants to even realize that we need to stop the dream, except in so far as we get to the point of <laughs> it becoming so insane <clears throat> that, as Bill Thetford said to Helen Schuckman, there must be another way. And once we get to another way, we have another opportunity. So that is why God placed the Holy Spirit in you where you place the dream. <clears throat> so we're dreaming. Actually, it's a nightmare, right? <laughs> we're dreaming an insane world which is, and it's always been a nightmare. There's nothing new about this particular dream that we're dreaming right now. It's just that it's sort of 
in our face at the moment, right? Okay. Now, my next slide originally said, it was a quote from uh, Soren Kierkegaard. You all know Soren Kierkegaard? He was a Danish theologian that lived during the uh, early, early part of the 19th century. Who, interestingly enough, is a complete aside, he and, and, and Thoreau are con totally contemporaneous, and I would love at some point to explain the there's amazing similarities between these two single guys who had the same, lived at exactly the same time in history. One gets, starts transcendentalism, one starts existentialism, going in very different directions. But anyhow, so Kierkegaard said, the whole of life is diseased. If I were a doctor and I was asked my advice, I would say, create silence. Right? And the Course in Miracles says, peace comes to the quiet mind. So right, maybe one of the things that we're feeling like we need right now is uh, for our own minds to get quiet, right? Because there's a chatter that's going on in here. I know that uh, <clears throat> Tuesday evening I fell asleep before the results came in, but I was convinced what they were going to be. <laughs> and it was a difficult sleep. Anybody else have trouble sleeping uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning? Yeah, so, it was, so it's not unusual. So it's, it's affecting the psyche of mankind. It's not just an individual thing. The psyche is the bigger part. It's the whole part that we're, that we're all a part of. Okay. So, <clears throat> of course, America says there is no safety in a battleground. You can look down on it in safety from above and not be touched but from within it, you can find no safety. So this is what we mean about taking the higher road, right? When you get up to the point, you look down on the game, you look down on the play, you look down on the battle, and you make this very simple decision, I am not going to play. I am just, I am not going to get involved in this insane game. Or as Ken Wapnick says, and I think I quoted this last week or two ago, stay out of the sandbox. <clears throat> The ego likes to get in the sandbox and start throwing sand around. It likes to begin to point out the errors and amplify the errors and making somebody else wrong and making myself right, etc. That's just the that's the game. Now, I'm not see if this is the same one or not. Nope. Okay, so I have a a quote here from the course that didn't get up there. In keeping with what we just said, you are not in this world. This is from chapter 6. You are not in this world, for the world is unhappy. Keep in mind, if this is a dream, that we're dreaming together, so to speak, right? But we're really not a part of it, because it is a dream, because it's fleeting, it doesn't last, it's not eternal. Only Another way to say this is only what's eternal is real. You are already a part of that which is eternal. <coughs> so it's a matter of remembering what's, what's really going on, where we really are, right? In fact, as the Course is going to say, you've, you've really never left your home. It's like uh, a good analogy is that we literally, we are sleeping, right? But the truth is that we're home in heaven, but, and God sees that we're sleeping. So then, the this, so the course is designed to help us awaken gently, slowly, softly, easily by coming to just sort of a deeper and deeper and deeper realization. All the way, the course is going all the way home, all the way back to enlightenment. Right. By the way, I heard Ken say on a CD this week as well that he thought that <clears throat> by the time you had read the Course for about 17 times, you might begin to get it. <laughs> but it's really true. I mean, and as, I don't mean that you've got to read it 17 times. But, you know, as you study it, the more you study it, the more you do get it, the more clarity. And, and then you, you should actually, I think, develop, as David and I have done, uh, develop an addiction to the Course. <laughs> Because it's a, uh, would you agree, a healthy addiction? I had a 27 year addiction. I gave it up in 2004. What? Oh, you mean another addiction? No. No, I mean, uh, okay, use the mic if you're going to talk. Okay. 
You got his name. Um, okay. Uh, for 27 years, I thought the answer was in the book. Oh. So I kept looking and looking and looking and looking. And then one day, I was listening to a Ken Wapnick uh, talk on the introduction to the clarification of terms, which you find on page 77 of the manual. And as I was listening to him, and he was saying things like, you know, the course is just concepts. It's symbols. Mm. It's words. Mm -hmm. And I actually heard Jesus speak to me and say, mm -hmm. Doug, what do you keep looking in the book for? You think you're going to find yourself in a book? God doesn't create books, concepts, symbols, words. Close the book already. And it was at that point in 2004, I said, it's time to develop trust in myself. And that's pretty much what you know, I feel the course is about, is developing that, uh, that trust in your true self, rather than thinking it comes from a book. Right. Yeah. In the meantime, it doesn't hurt that we've got this helpful tool. Oh. <laughs> I from it every day. Yeah, we all do. But that right. doesn't mean that, that, yeah, I am reminded to look at it. Mm -hmm. But whatever, like today's reminder was Lesson 188, which I got from two different places within 10 minutes. <laughs> Uh -huh. One was from Ken Wapnick and one was from Lisa Natoli. And I said, wow, Lesson 188, 188 <laughs> I, I, the peace of God is shining in me mm -hmm. now, which we're going to talk about. Okay. It's interesting because when I, when I was uh, working this morning at the, at the desk, I thought I, I'd like to do a meditation today at the end of everything. I thought, and I got, do the peace of God is shining. I mean, now we'll do that at the very end of our day today, right? Or David or I, one of the two, will we'll do that. It's in part of, remember Zhao Wang, who was with us back in October, right? The Chinese uh, girl, the 19-year-old, who has these brilliant, brilliant lines that came up in the description of her story. One of those lines, which I thought was just absolutely brilliant, was, uh, concepts are the ego's clothes. Just like five words, you know, there, there were a lot of little, little gems mixed in to what she came up Concept of the ego's clothes. And it's very, get, it's very easy for us to get caught in the concepts, which means that, that we're more concerned about the concepts <clears throat> than we are just about, about being peaceful. And, and more than we're just kind of letting the world be what it is. This is really a good time where we just kind of have to let the world be what it is, right? And, and get to, you know, be peaceful inside myself or yourself, regardless of what the ex external circumstances seem to be that are happening in the world. And David? There's that, there's that wonderful line in the course, the goal of this course is peace, right. not knowledge. <clears throat> and that's a very clear statement. The goal of this course is peace, not knowledge. If, if, if once you get that, what John is saying is everything, really. Can you imagine that there's anything really that you want more than peace? I mean, if you have peace of mind, you really got it, don't you? I mean, you know, then whatever you do in the world is whatever you do in the world. But the idea is to be able to be at peace, actually, regardless of circumstances, regardless of what's going on on the outside world, you can still be at peace. Right. All right, so back to, I was uh, starting to read this quote here first. You are not in this world, for the world is unhappy. How else can you find joy in a joyless place except by realizing that you are not there? Okay, so you're not there because this is a dream. And who you are, what you are, is an awakened. You are awake. You are not dreaming. You are not sleeping. It looks like a dream. But ultimately, that's not the case. You cannot be anywhere God did not put you. So <clears throat> God did not put us into the dream. We chose to fall asleep. <clears throat> we chose to go into the dream, which again is a kind of way, of, as a prodigal son or daughter, a kind of a way of running away from home <laughs> by falling into the dream. And God created you part of him. Now let's go, now I do have this, this next one is on. So there's no safety in the battleground. We did that. Let's go to the next one. All right. You do not see that all your misery comes from the strange belief that you are powerless. 
And this is very important because now we get to the point of being able to see that we can change things by doing nothing more complicated than changing our minds. All right? You are not powerless because you are always in charge of how you wish to see. This is me, not a quote from the Course. <laughs> you are always in charge of your mind. Will you look on the world with love or you prefer to attack it? So that's really the position we're in right now. We're, we see what's going on in the world and we have a very simple choice. Um, I love it, hate it, uh, leave it alone, <laughs> right? Not get caught in the whole thing at all. all right. Let's go and see if this is the next one. The next one. Um, okay. I have a different one. Let me share this one I've got here first. The ego becomes strong in strife. I, we hinted at this earlier. The ego really likes the battle, really wants to play out this insane game, looking for an opportunity to attack. Because the idea of danger has entered your mind. So the ego thinks it needs to be, it needs protection. And a lot of this is all about the body, because keep in mind the ego, the body is the ego's chosen home. So on the ego level, we really do think that we are these bodies. And now we add to this the fear element, which is that the body is in danger. We're, we're afraid of what may be happening in the future. That's a part of what's going on, right? And it's the fear, we were talking uh, earlier with Christian, is always, it's always about the future. It's always about what might happen. It's not what is happening. It's what might happen. That's the, the, the ego does not really live in, that's because the ego doesn't live in the present. <clears throat> the Course it repeatedly asks us to just get into the present. If you just get into the present, it's okay. Things are fine. You know, there, there's, that's why we got, we got guilt in the past and fear in the future. But the present is where we live. This is all related to time. Time being the great illusion. I go on with this quote. The idea itself is an appeal to the ego. The Holy Spirit is as vigilant as the ego to the call of danger, opposing with his strength just as the ego welcomes it. It really welcomes it. We want the strife. We want the difficulty. We want to get in there and fight. The Holy Spirit counters this welcome by welcoming peace. Eternity and peace are as closely related as time and war. Now that's an interesting sentence. Let me repeat it. Eternity and peace. My book over there, Eternal Life. <laughs> what that's about is that that's about in part about the, this is where you already are. You're already at home in the mind of God. And again, the task is simply one of remembering that that is the case. So if you remember that's the case, that brings you back to peace. When we get into, when we get into time, we get into war. We get into the fight. The thing is to stay out of the fight, or as Ken says, stay out of the sandbox. All right? All right. And I've got another couple more before this different here. Do you not see that all your misery comes from this strange belief that you're powerless? Do we have that? I do. These are switching. All right. Let me go on. I'll just do what's up here. So this is a Course in Miracles. It's a required Course. You all know where this is from, right? The very first line in the Course. Only the time you take it at free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. We're going to talk about free will here a little bit. Okay. So... Every one of us are a choice as to how we're going to A, see what's going on and how we're going to handle it. Are we going to continue to have peace of mind or are we going to let this distraction pull us out of our peace of mind? It's just a distraction, right? It's not the end of the world. It's a distraction. Let's go on further. Oops. 
Here again is the paradox, often referred to in this course, to say, of myself I can do nothing is to gain all power. Why is that true? Let's go on. And yet it's but a seeming paradox. As God created you, you have all power. This, the, the, it's, at times it may sound like the Course in Miracles is incredibly arrogant, but what it's really saying is when you can realign the mind back with the mind, then you realize that you do have all power because you're a part of God. The image you made of yourself has none, has no power. Why does it have no power? It's a dream figure. It's a figure in the dream. And it's subject to the circumstances that it sees going on within the context of the dream. The Holy Spirit knows the truth about you. The image you made does not. So the, always what we're doing here is just getting back to the truth of who we, who we really are. Right? And let's go on. So free will. i got to be careful. Free will must lead to freedom. This is a very strange paradox. Let's just talk about the paradox here that's about a little bit more. It looks as though we don't have free will because we think, I'd rather do it, I'd like to do things my way. Your way is actually God's way. That's what you want to do. More than anything else, you want to do the way God, and Jesus is really saying in the text, says, I was simply someone, kind of among the first, who is able to realign the mind back with the mind, to get back in alignment with the Holy, to have the Holy Spirit's voice speak through me all the time. So there should be some times in your life that you feel that you're very much in line, that you are actually hearing and you're actually paying attention to what this voice is asking you to do. And when you do that, it feels really good. I was reading a part of the course recently where it talks it's about generosity and about sharing. And it was really saying that is really our greatest joy. Our greatest joy is when we are giving, when we're sharing, because that is a kind of a connection, because you know that you're doing something worthy of the whole. I saw something kind of tragic last night, and I wish I, I just had this feeling, I wish I could have done something about it, but I was driving home on coming up to the, go on to the, the, the George Washington Bridge, and there was a young woman, maybe in her 20s, who was had this desperate, standing in the traffic, with like this desperate, desperate look on her face, like, help me, help me, and I just got, oh my God, I wanted to stop and be able to turn around and go back, and God only knows, but it would have been so nice to have been able to help this Obviously, very broken and very lost soul who was out here. Uh, what, in the, what in the world she was doing in the middle of the traffic? Yes, hon. Oh, yeah, take the mic. I feel like my country has a desperate look on its face. And mm. to sit back and have peace in my heart and live my comfortable life feels like a betrayal when our president-elect says it's the U.S. against the war. And I can hear these drum, the U.S. against the war, Freudian slip. It's the U.S. against the world. Um, I can hear these drum beats growing, and I can feel the call within my soul. Um, people are worried about their mothers and uncles being deported, little children in Brooklyn public schools. I know. Uh, people are worried that the repudiation of the Defense of Marriage Act, meaning gays and lesbians have the right to marry, that that will be overturned. The new president-elect would have the potential to replace four justices on the Supreme Court. If, if the judiciary is conservative and the ACLU takes someone to court, they're going to lose. Um, women's rights over their own body and the right of reproductive freedom is at stake. So...
is my answer sitting and reading A Course in Miracles, <laughs> or is it boarding a bus for the Million Woman March yeah. on the day after the inauguration? It's, it's, I need peace. I'm feeling a lot of agitation. Well, I think it's, it's doing whatever you feel called to do, okay? But meaning being in peace at the same time that you're, that you're, called, that you're doing it. That's good. That's, that's helpful to me. Right. Um, so we're, <laughs> at the moment we're talking about <clears throat> being at peace, but that doesn't mean you don't take action. You know, it, it doesn't mean that there aren't things that you, especially if you feel called to do these things, then go ahead and do them. So you stand up for what you think is right. At the same time, you're not condemning and attacking and, and damning the hell out of those who are on the other side of the fence. It's hurtful that um, people who are a lot smarter than me are saying that many folks in in the Midwest, you know, may wake up fairly soon and feel really duped, you know, that the big steel and coal jobs aren't coming back. Um, and that's what they voted for. Um, I'd like to see the return of, of blue collar jobs with union protections too. I think we all would and they're gone forever. You can't stop progress and you, you can't stop automation. So, um, I feel like innocence was taken advantage of, mm -hmm. and people were sold a bill of goods. Um, that makes me sad. Right. At the same time, we recognize that some sort of, so to speak, the majority has spoken. Whether the majority is right or the majority is wrong, right? N not and when, not when, not when one candidate won five hundred thousand more votes. Oh, I understand. In the actual popular <laughs> yeah, vote. A, I got it. I mean, I understand that, hon. It's, it's oh, Hillary Clinton won 500,000 more votes. She did, yes. You watched Sunday morning on CBS right. today. Right. Um, she's a half a million, 500,000 votes ahead. So this, we saw this, we've seen this movie before. We have. It played out in the year 2000. Right. When Al Gore won the popular vote and George W. Bush. Became president. Became president. Right. So we're, it's the same song, second verse. This right. is the fifth time this has happened in history. It's the fourth time. It happened four other times. It happened twice before, yeah. It happened in the 19th century. Um, so I feel like this is our Vietnam, and I feel like maybe we need to look at the Electoral College. Maybe we need to look at um, why we've, um, why the head of a reality TV program, it will be reality TV for the next four years. That'll, that will be leading the networks. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you all on all, all the things that you said, Brooke. Go ahead. Yeah, if I, if I may. Speaking. Actually, the course does answer all of our fears, in a way. The introduction to the course literally says, that which is real cannot be threatened. That which is unreal doesn't exist. Herein lies the peace of God. Now, I know those are just words, but I've come to actually recognize that when it says your only responsibility here in this world is to accept the atonement for yourself, it's actually recognizing that there is no separation, there is no division. So words can be spoken, words can be said, but when you realize that the truth is that we are one, that this power that actually runs the world is not in the White House, or it's not in Moscow. It's within us, but not of us. And you find that, by the way, in trust. And if it's OK, I just, just want to read this part. Go ahead. Trust. This is in the uh, section four, the teacher's manual. It says, the teachers of God have trust in the world because they have learned it is not governed by the laws that the world made up. It's governed by a power that is in them but not of them. It is this power that keeps all things safe. It is through this power that the teachers of God look on a forgiven world. The course really is worth what we give to it. You know, like this is my Bible. But you have to not just read the words. You have to actually begin to accept it. It's a matter of self-acceptance that you are the Holy Son of God, that you are eternal, that you cannot be hurt, that there's nothing that can hurt you, that that, that which is real cannot be threatened. 
But if we live in our fears, yes, we're, we're fear of loss of all of our rights that we have gained and they're all going to be thrown out the door. That's fear. You have to recognize fear for what it is. We give the meaning to the fears. We give meanings and then we talk about it. And those are the distractions from the peace of God that we truly are. So, and both of you are right. You know, the question is, am I, am I going to get into my fears and then am I going to let that lead me into warring? Or can I remain, can I hold a place of peace inside myself? At the same time, perhaps I'm doing something, whatever it is, whatever it is that I can do in my own small way with my, by not going crazy myself, by not attacking my neighbor, literally, right? And by the Course in Miracles would say, <laughs> Here, there's an interesting, I want to read this from chapter 9. When a brother behaves insanely, you can heal him. You know the passage. <laughs> you can heal him only by perceiving, his, if you perceive his, oh, let me start it over again. When a brother behaves insanely, you can heal him only by perceiving the sanity in him. Where is the sanity <laughs> in appointing... Yeah to the head of the environmental protection to protect the environmental protection agency, mm -hmm. a denier of the science of climate change. I feel like I need to go to war against that. Right. That seems ironic. It does. But we're still, asked, we're still being asked to see, regardless of circumstances, to be able to see the Sandy and our brothers and our sisters, the only way that healing can occur. It can't occur with murder. It can't occur with uh, annihilation. No, no, I, no, 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 just, okay. no, 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 like, no, like joining the ACLU and, no, no, I meant when I say war, I mean like in, a, in the figurative sense, like right. a literal sense. In your mind. No, meaning. They mean literally. No, 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 okay. meaning going to war, meaning speaking, okay. writing, marching, <laughs> voting. Okay. Protesting, showing up. Again, as I said, well, this doesn't mean you don't do things. The war, the use of the word war is a very heavy word. Taking uh, action. You're talking about taking action. Taking action, action taking right. action. Right. Again, it doesn't mean you don't take action. You do what, what feel, what's right in your own mind to change things. In the meantime, you, you want to stay at peace yourself. Right? That's what we're talking about. And we're talking about how do we see this whole, the whole thing within my... Can I maintain peace? Can I watch what's on the news dispassionately, or am I going to go crazy because of what I'm watching? I'm struggling mightily with that. Yeah, you're, that's why we're addressing this topic, because there's a lot of us that are struggling with it as well. Right. And, find, and being, trying to find a place of peace inside ourselves at the same time that the, that the world is going insane. That becomes a challenge. David? And there's one section here, because basically the word war is a, is a Big mask. It is. It, it's another, another word for war is conflict. You know, there, there is a conflict going on. There's a section called Chapter 2, Section 6, Fear and Conflict. You find it on page 28 and 29 of the course of the text. And in, and in paragraph 4 is one of the most unusual things that Jesus says in the course. He says, listen, don't ask me to take away your fear. I can't do that for you. Mm -hmm. I'll give you his exact words. He says, the correction of fear is your responsibility. When you ask for release from fear, you're implying that it's not true. You, you are in fear. There's no two ways about it. But I can't help you because I, I know the fear is not real. But you do. But then he goes on to say, this is what he says. He says, the, it says, the, the correction is always the same. Before you choose to do anything, ask me if your choice is in accordance with mine. If you are sure that it is, that it is there will be no fear. So when we go off on our own, out of the belief in separation, and that's basically what conflict is. It's those guys over here and us over here. And that's the, that's the history of the world since Adam. There's, there's never been a time it isn't those out there. And as long as you're making that real, there's going to be fear. Because fear really comes from the belief in separation. That's, that's all it is. And that's why the acceptance of the atonement is the separation never happened. Now, I'm not asking you to accept the atonement. It took me a very, very long time. But you have to also see that the fear, we, we are responsible for looking at the fear and saying, what am I really afraid of? 
that my rights can be taken away. Actually, yes. act, well, if you think the government runs who you are from birth to death, then basically you're identifying yourself with the body. There's no two ways about it. If you think that you're a body, you will, you will live in fear from birth to death. If you're looking at the course, you were never born and you're never going to die. Swear not to die, holy son of God. You make a bargain you cannot keep. So as long as you believe in death, as long as you believe there's going to be fear, that you're not safe. It will be a battle of survival. The ego, the ego is only interested in survival. It's not interested in anything else. Um, Giselle has a, can we get a mic for Giselle, please? Where's the other mic? Oh, right there. Uh, what always helps me when I get into fear, and I experience fear as much as anyone else, and uh, I just feel that I think there's a greater plan, and the Course says there is a greater plan. We don't know what that is, and we don't know that Trump may be the great part of that plan. Or the oh, well, you could call him whatever, but if there's a greater plan, and if basically uh, that that brings peace to my mind. And I have to trust that. If I trust the course and I try to follow the course, I must believe that there is a greater plan. And that's always in effect. And Jesus said that. He said that anything the ego creates, the Holy Spirit will correct. And I truly believe that. Mm -hmm. And you have to reach a level where you, you say that when you're in fear. Because it really helps a lot. I remind you of. Um, I I think once told you was talking about um, the doomsday preppers who are getting you know ready for the end of the world and obviously there's a lot of fear around that and it all has to do with the body. You know, it all has to do about the the preservation of the body. And I thought one of the funniest scenes that they showed on this show was this woman who had like 5,000 pounds of food in her house, uh, dried to in, in her basement and in her hallways down through the middle of the house. And uh, her bed was built on five 50-gallon uh, drums of water, et cetera, et cetera, all, all out of fear. And so she says, when the, when the world goes to hell, I'll still be here. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't think about, where are you going to be? <laughs> you're gonna be in hell. That's where you're gonna be, right? If that if that's what it's all about, and it's not all about that. It's actually all about our getting to the higher level of understanding who we really are in truth, as a part of the eternal. And and, and, and eternally, you can't be. In peace. This doesn't mean again you don't do things. Now Jesus was doing things, and he got hung on the cross for it. Right? It wasn't that he wasn't doing anything. He was, he was helping out in all kinds of ways. Right? He was helping to heal different individuals right, right away. Let's go a little further with this. Oh, yeah, sure. You, you need to take the mic. Um, while you were speaking about that, a few things just flashed through my mind. Um, there, are, there are singular quotes in the Course that, that says, Hear my words, for herein lies the power of salvation. You are doing this unto yourself. And what we're doing to ourselves, being of mind, is we're creating the fear for ourselves. You know, even in workbook lesson five, it says we are never upset for the reason we think we are. You know, I always find it helpful if you'll go to the workbook index and just read the titles of the first 50 lessons. Mm you will often find you can return to peace, you can return to sanity just by reading those first 50 headers. They're really, really powerful because Jesus does tell us we are the enemy, as are we the Christ. You know, that's why we are the ones that have the power to determine our sanity or insanity. You know, so. Right. Okay, let's go... We were here. So we're talking about uh, free will, and I didn't finish this process. Uh, I'll start over. Free will must lead to freedom. It is not your will to be imprisoned because your will is free. 
That is why the ego is the denial of free will. See, we get this really interesting paradox here. The really interesting paradox is that you are exercising your free will when you choose to align the mind with the mind of God. Otherwise, you're actually subject to like an addiction or so you're, you're, you're being pulled down into, into an illusion. It seems strange because it seems like the ego will assert itself by choosing something. I have the right to choose to be outside of the mind of God. Well, you do have that right, but that doesn't make you happy. In fact, is that's, that's, not your, that's not your free will. That's the strange paradox. And then the last line, when the will is really free, it cannot miscreate because it recognizes only truth. So the, I, I think the question we need to ask all of ourselves is, um, are my thoughts creative or miscreative? You know, in other words, are they helpful? Are they loving? Are they constructive? Or are they destructive? You know, do, do, do they want to tear things apart? And if, and if it wants to tear things apart and destroy, I remember that I think last time or the time before I talked about the line that, you know, there's these lines in the course that when you read them, you just, they sort of stick in your mind for a while and you kind of keep going over and over, over them. It was that no one attacks without intent to hurt. And just such a simple, like seven words or something, but do we really want to hurt each other? with our verb, with our language, with, you know, do we really want to be attacking? And we're, we're trying to learn, this is a difficult lesson to learn. We're trying to learn how to think. That's the main thing. We're trying to learn how to think in a wholly different way. And it's very, uh, we were talking in the car, riding down from up <laughs> both sides of my, it's so easy to get seduced back into the ego stuff again. You, you, you master this, you get it, you, got, you understand it, you're able to hold it for a while, and then some perturbation comes along and you lose the whole damn thing. You know, you fall back. So the only thing you can do is just keep practicing. Keep making the right choice, Be the creative choice, which is always a loving, what's the loving thing to do? And if I'm choosing the loving thing to do, I'm going to feel good. That's the main bit of it. I'm going to feel good. I mean, by good, I mean joyful. And knowing that I've done something helpful. Just they're, they're, they're actually, of course, there's, there's no greater joy than feeling as though you've been a part of something constructive, that, that you've been helpful. And, and, and whether it's just... I so wanted to be able to help that girl last night. You know, it's just like this awful thing about, there was no way I could have turned around and gone back and done anything about that. But God, it would have felt good to have been able to. Even if I'd been thrown her $5 out the window or something. You know what I'm saying? All right, so let's go a little further with this. Uh, oops, now I'm, uh, this is... Um, this is the part I was going to get to, the, the mystical part, so I'm going to leave this uh, alone for now. And I'll go to David. If you want to share some of the stuff that you want to start sure. earlier. Okay. Sure. Why don't you go ahead? And we'll take a break in about 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> you know, uh, Again. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to start with the, the recognition that we are all joined, because uh, that is the truth. Uh, that's what the atonement is that, is that we are one, we are joined. Uh, uh, thanks to uh, your saying, just take a look at the, the titles of the first 50 lessons, and you may actually find there's a lot of peace there. When you said that, it reminded me of Ken Wapnick, who we all love, and he was really my mentor in so many ways. Uh, his two favorite lessons was lesson number five and lesson number 34. Lesson number five is, I am never upset for the reason I think. And I can just hear John Mundy now saying, it, the ego would love it <laughs> if he said, I'm not upset usually or most times. No, I am never upset. 
for the reason I think you actually did that in in that in one of your albums, which I, I listen to a lot of John too, of course. Um, <clears throat> I'm never upset for the reason I think. So if we're living in fear. It's because we are listening to a voice up here that we think knows the truth. Like that person is. Wait, you got to use this. I like an ice cream cone. And that person. <laughs> That no, person no, is, looking. you know, <laughs> separate, different, and apart from me, we are not the same. Now, lesson 34 is the antidote to lesson number five. I'm never upset for the reason I think. And 34 is, I can choose peace instead of this. I can, so it's always back to me. I think it's sitting over there at 1500 Pennsylvania Avenue, no. Peace of God is within me now. I can choose the peace. I don't have to listen to this voice up here. So if I'm upset, if I'm in fear, it's because I want to be in fear. The, the uh, topic I was supposed to speak on is why I don't feel the love of God within me now, which happens to be lesson 189. The last time I was here, which was a month ago, I, I, I spoke for about 10 or 15 minutes. I actually read that very famous paragraph seven. You want to feel the love of God within you now? Simply do this. Be still. Do not take with you one thought that you ever had of yourself or what God is. Nothing you ever thought was true or real or good or right. Nothing you're ever ashamed of. Hold on to nothing. Forget this world. Forget this course and come with holy, empty hands into your God. You know, when I first started this course in 1977, I, I did the lessons first. It took me a long time to get into the text. Uh, and for the most part, I thought the lessons were OK. You know, I was at a place where I was a Buddhist, and I was take, you know, doing all kinds of other things. I was a rebirth. I was doing all kinds of things. So the course was just like another book. You know, <laughs> I was doing the lessons. And then I came to lesson 189, paragraph 7, which I just read from. And that says, forget this world, forget this course. I said, wait a minute. This person who wrote this, I didn't know Helen, Jesus, I didn't know, I didn't know Jesus, Helen, I didn't know, I'm just reading a book. <laughs> so forget this course, it gives you 1,300 pages and tells you to forget it. All of a sudden, I had a lot of respect for it. I knew it wasn't the ego. I knew the ego writes books. I knew the ego <laughs> writes books. I knew that. But no ego would ever tell you to forget what he just gave you. No ego would do that. I had enough understanding of the ego because I... I think I told you the last time I was here that I had done S in 75. Without S, I could never, ever have done for us. And as a matter of fact, I knew John Mundy just about at some time at 75, in 1975. But I didn't even know that he, he was doing the course. I wasn't doing the course until 77, I found it. And thanks to Giselle Lasbro, who's sitting in the back row, uh, she, on New Year's Eve of 1980, I think I told the story the last time, uh, one, one second after midnight, when John said, let's party, she said, why don't we start a Course in Miracles group in my home? And she said, and, and David, why don't you lead it? And what's going on in my mind is, you can't do that. <laughs> How could you lead it? You, you're halfway through the lessons. You never opened the textbook. You can't do that. And out of my mouth came, OK, I'll do it. <laughs> So I had, I had a, at that point in my life, I had a pretty good understanding of how the ego operates. And that's what this course is for. It's, it's, to, it's to teach you that you're listening to a voice that's not your own voice. And exactly as Jean says, it's teaching you to how to think in a new way. Certainly not listening to this voice, but actually stepping back and letting spirit lead the way. That is our free will, basically. And for me, free will, you know, is thy will be done, because our will is one. We 
There's only one will. It's not two wills. There's one other thing about peace. It says the, the goal of this course is peace, not knowledge. But peace has one condition. <laughs> it's amazing that even peace has a condition. And the condition of peace is equality, <laughs> which is sameness. Just, which is oneness, you know, make this year different by making it all the same. If I see anyone out there, I don't care what his name is or her name, it doesn't really matter. And I think that they're different and they're not equal, they're not as good, they're better. I'm listening to the ego. I'm just, I'm just the ego's puppet. In the Song of Prayer, which I know a lot of you are familiar with the Song of Prayer. It's one of the pamphlets that came along with the Course. There's three sections. The first is on prayer. The second is on forgiveness. And he's always laughing and joking. He says, you know, the world thinks of forgiveness as forgiveness to destroy. Like, I forgive you this time, but I may not forgive you next time. You better not do it again. But finally, you come to the third section, which is, I think, on page 17 of the pamphlet. And, and he calls it healing to separate, which is another joke, you know. <laughs> I'm going to heal by separating myself. And one of the ways that he, and what he speaks about is that whenever you think that somebody outside of you knows more than you, because they've been doing the course longer than you, and you're going to listen to them <laughs> because they're going to give you what it is that they know, but you don't know yet. He says, how can that be? That's impossible. How can you go from being unequal, unequal, to equal? That's impossible. You're either equal. You've always been the equal, holy son of God. You've always been. It's never been a time you haven't been. So if there's anything that I need to do for myself is to see all as the same, all as equal. There's no peace if I see somebody's better and I'm not as good as them because they know more than me. I'm better than them because, you know, I know what works and I know what, what doesn't work. That's always the ego speaking to us. That's always the ego who knows more. The ego is called I know. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's the idea of the ego. That's why I do not know what anything is for. Lesson 25 is my mantra lesson. My mantra lesson that I took on in 2004, which is the time that I said I heard... Jesus speak to me and said, hey, David, close the book already. You think you're going to find yourself in a book? God doesn't create books. So at that point, I thought I knew a lot because I had pretty much known everything between these covers. And that's true. And uh, at that time, I came up with a thing called the 12 Core Themes of A Course in Miracles, which is now on six pages. And the funniest thing, we all made a couple of mistakes coming here. One, one of the things is I had made up a, a Xerox of the simplified version of the 12 core themes to bring them here. And there would have been one for everyone here. And would you believe? You left. I left at home. Yeah. Yeah. I left at home. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's very easy to get it because I have it. Of course, all you have to do is contact me. Uh, I have your website. Plenty of ways you can contact me, my, my email. My, my phone number, just call, and I will send it to you in email format. And I won't send you the simple version, which is the two pages that I made up. I'll send you the complete six pages of the core themes, the 12 core themes of A Course in Miracles. Because even though there's 1,300 pages, what I recognize is that the 1,300 pages, he says the same thing over and over and over. You know, every single lesson is saying the same thing in a slightly different way. He tells you this in Review Lesson 6, the last 20 lessons of this course of, of Part 1 of the workbook, Lessons 181 to 200. He says, any one of these lessons is the entire course. Now, how could he say that? <laughs> you realize Unless every one of these lessons are equal. Right. He's saying the same thing using different words. That's all. And, and as a matter of fact, as we come back and we'll take a look at some of those last 20 lessons, the one that was given to me today, uh, I spent a lot of time on 187. I blessed the world because I blessed myself. Uh, a lot of time on 189, which is the one that basically I realized this, this course was not just another book. 
I, you know, uh, which is, I feel the love of God within me now. And then 190, I can choose the peace of God instead of the pain, which is, so there's four lessons in a row, 87, 88, 89, 90. And I notice I always left out 188, because somehow I wasn't there yet. And today I actually arrived at 188 for the first time. And it was given to me to share it with you, literally. And 188 is and the peace of the God, peace of God, God is, shining. is shining in me now. Of course, the peace of God is shining in all of us. You think that one person has the peace of God and others don't have the peace of God? Really? So, I guess if you want to. Wait, yeah, wait, we're going to take a break. We, we will talk about all of that. Thank, I think, you, thank you so much. I think a, lot of part, a part of what David is saying is regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of all the circumstances, and all of that you said as certainly appears that all is very real. But is the peace of God in me yet? You're right. You know, during, regardless of what's going on, right? If the peace of God is shining in me now, it doesn't mean I don't take action. It doesn't mean I don't do things. It doesn't mean I don't stand up for what's right. But I hold on to my peace. That's the challenge. In other words, to be able to hold that peace regardless of how insane. This is what Jesus is doing on the cross. I mean, what he's doing on the cross here is a really insane situation going on. He is being crucified. He's, his body is being literally killed, and he doesn't see it that way. You know, he's not going crazy because he knows, for one thing, that he's not a body. By the way, in The Course of Miracles, he says, you know, this was the last use, useless journey any child or God had to make, and you don't have to do what I, you don't have to be crucified to understand this, although there may be times in which we feel that we're kind of in those kind of positions. By that I mean you have to sort of step aside a little bit. Let's take a break. <laughs>